this would have been a double dose Karen, but this is just a Karen update. Remember the cop who told someone go back to Mexico while other cops smirked? We have an update, a major update. Let me remind you of the incident. Here it is. With millions watching and many people benefiting from this program called Indisputable, we just need 1% of the viewers to become a paid member so we can continue to bring this content to you. Now back to the show. Yep, put up the picture full of masks. The officer works for Detroit police. We covered this yesterday per Detroit News. Detroit police lieutenant, a man who has rank, Brandon Cole on the left, has now been placed on administrative duty amid an internal investigation into his verbal exchange with protesters who demonstrated Sunday outside of Huntington Place. This was during President Joe Biden's visit to the NAACP dinner on Sunday. Now, why were they there? They were there to protect the community, to maintain order, to provide professional services of public safety. The viral 19 second TikTok video captured Lieutenant Cole asking a woman who was protesting against the US sending military aid to Israel, quote, why don't you just go back to Mexico? The woman, um, Dearborn resident and activist, Lexis Zayden on the right replies in the video, she's Palestinian, not Mexican. Detroit Police Chief James White said he reviewed the clip shortly after it was posted and quote, was outraged by what I saw, end quote. But said body cam footage of the entire exchange, quote, provides context to what occurred out there. The full footage showed Cole was suggesting the protester returned to vacationing in Mexico after she posted on social media about her recent trip. Now, does this make sense to you? There's more. The chief stated that despite the full video providing context, concerns remain as lieutenants should lead by example and avoid personal engagements like this to prevent any misunderstandings. Come on, chief, come on, man. What you doing, Chief? Come on, bro. You know he says go back to Africa. Whoever he is being racist against, he will name a country he believes you belong in. Okay? There's more. So the protester, Zayden, said the entire ordeal reveals, quote, major problems in the department that Chief White needs, Chief White needs to address because it shows that police are stalking innocent civilian social media posts. Understand this, right? That's what he said. That's how he came to his statement, according to the police chief. So the issue is they are stalking innocent civilians social media post. Although police often monitor social media feeds prior to and during protest and other events, Zayden says she feels she's being watched because she's Palestinian. To racially target me like that is problematic. So the irony gets even deeper. So while we assumed that this was just a bigoted police officer who felt very comfortable in his bigotry in front of other cops, it seems as if, according to the chief, He put her under the protester under some kind of illegal investigation by creating inquiry into her social media when there's no crime committed at all. So during um, Monday's press conference at public safety headquarters, police officials show both the TikTok clip and longer footage from an officer's body cam after officers are heard discussing who should possibly be ticketed for making excessive noise during the protest. A female in the crowd says, give me a ticket, I don't give up. Exactly. And then Cole says, why don't you just go back to Mexico? Because that's where you hanging out 
you were hanging out there and having a good time there. Zayden retorted, I'm not even Mexican. No, you were there. You went there, Officer Cole said. An unknown woman yelled, she's not even Mexican, you dumb idiot. They called him a ginger. After Cole repeats, you went there, Zayden replies, what, are you stalking my Instagram, effing weirdo? Go back to Mexico, you racist MFR. Lieutenant Cole replies, go back and hang out in Mexico. Go back where you were and go party. Go party in Mexico again, Lieutenant Cole replied. Um, you know, if you work at Taco Bell, and that's a noble job, any legal job is a noble job. But if you did that at Taco Bell, you would not be, um, you know, put on desk duty. You would be fired because Taco Bell has standards. Uh, you can engage with the public like this as a police officer where accountability should actually be higher. And the police chief will come out and say, oh, no big deal here. Um, he actually had her under investigation. He already knew she went messy. Put him up. Commander Michael McGinnis, head of the department's Professional Standards Bureau, said, quote, when you have that context, it changes the egregiousness of the interaction. And though it does not eliminate concerns that Chief White has, it does change the storyline. How? How does it change the storyline, sir? How? He assumed she was Mexican. He's stalking her IG. Sir, it actually makes it worse. It makes it more problematic, not less problematic. You guys are reaching here. There's more. Officer Cole was longtime supervisor in the ninth. Precincts, Special Operations Unit. Prior to his recent move to the Department of Mobile Field Force that monitors protesters. So McGinnis said Cole has been removed from the Mobile Field Force and will remain on administrative duty until the investigation is finished. The probe, he said, focus on possible. A policy violations, you don't say, okay? There's more, during the press conference, White said, the investigation was revealed that, has revealed that this protest had posted information about Cole's marital status and other details, and we're looking into how she obtained those. What? That, another officer told him, they don't like him, that's how, okay? All right, part of the internal investigation, McGinnis said, will be what was posted online prior to Sunday's incident, members of the protest group. There's evidence to suggest they posted personal information about officers, McGinnis said. It's evident from the video, there's knowledge both ways between the protest and the other way as well. That's going to be part of the investigation. What's the problem? What's the issue? She has some inside information on him. He has some inside information on her. You all are completely okay with the information that he brought out in that public back and forth. And somebody gave her information. Who, who do you think gave her the information? Hmm? One of your guys did. All right. That's my speculation. Zayden was um, said, excuse me, that White and McGinnis told blatant lies at that press conference. Quote, I don't know, Lieutenant Cole. I've never met him, she said. They were referring to another protester, so it's clear they haven't done a deep investigation. <laughs> but, but he's on the special operations team, special ops. Um, put him up, Detroit Police Commissioner. Willie Burton plans to address the issue at Thursday's Board of Police Commissioners meeting. Burton said, I plan to engage with my colleagues Thursday to investigate this further to see if anyone's civil rights were violated. Come on, Willie Burton, Commissioner Burton, you look like you know what's up, man. Okay? So, so, brother, I'm rooting for you to do the right thing here, okay? All right, a lot of twists and turns, David, but damn, 
uh, the story is actually worse than we first assumed it was. What's that? Yeah, all I can say is wow. I mean, the tenaciousness of that police officer, I'm constantly amazed. I mean, they have the ability clearly to take somebody's name, take a snippet of information, go on social media, find out about that protester. They can do all of those steps, process the information, figure out that, yeah, maybe she was in Mexico, but they don't have the smarts. They don't have the <laughs> intellect to realize you really shouldn't say to somebody, hey, why don't you go back to Mexico? Even right. if it wasn't meant as you're Mexican, you're somehow should go back to Mexico where your vacation. That is so stupid. And the fact is, anybody who knows really anything about law enforcement will appreciate. If you're a protester, you have a First Amendment right and a settled law to say to the police, whatever you want. You can't threaten them per se, but you can tell them to do that thing that is anatomically impossible and they cannot arrest you for it. You have a free speech right to do that. If you're a government employee, if you're a police officer, you don't have those rights. You can't say whatever you may be feeling or whatever you want because there are certain restrictions and there are certain responsibilities you have as a member of that police force. This is basic stuff for law enforcement, but clearly not for this particular officer. And David, you do such great reporting on police officer and community interaction. And you help us understand our rights in full context. When he decided to blurt all this information out in front of everybody, that's kind of antithetical to a special operations or mobile field unit because they're, they're typically trying to gather intelligence just in case they need to make some decisions. Um, and usually that information is not shared unless it has to be. Isn't that pretty much how it works typically? Yeah, and it also means that some of the information that they have gathered, now it could be thrown out if in fact they're gonna bring any sort of prosecution. Because yeah. if they didn't have a proper warrant to try to obtain some of this information, if it wasn't publicly available, then they're gonna be in some trouble. And the other thing that this underscores is that there's a circle the wagons mentality still among police. The police chief could have just said, look, this is unacceptable. I'm not gonna right. tolerate any police officer to be bigoted or racist or anything like that. So this officer's on suspension, whatever the punishment's gonna be, that's the end of it. But for the police officer, for the police department to say, well, there's context. Well, she went to Mexico. As you pointed out, that doesn't make any difference. And now they've taken what should have been a one or two day story and they've made it a 12 day story and they keep digging the hole deeper. What a mistake. You are so right. They gave this story more legs than it had. It was just, uh, he was just a Karen yesterday. Uh, this is a full regular story now and it will have an update soon.